Hey guys, Savage Joy here with Real Progressives. Um, sorry I'm quite late tonight. Um, this is something that has never happened to me. In over 80 shows, I have a no-call, no-show candidate. Um, she hasn't seen my messages. Um, I don't know what's going on. I hope everything's okay. Um, but uh, this is not going to be rescheduled. Um, she has her primary in less than two weeks. Um, so I'm not even going to go there because there's too many candidates I have lined up um, who will, you know, be uh, here. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I asked in an RP chat, you know, uh, people said I should still go live and I'm like, okay, what should I talk about? Cause I'm, as you guys know, I'm pretty much opinionated about everything. Uh, <laughs> so, so one of my teammates said voting. Um, so I thought that was a very good idea. Um, so we can talk a little bit about that. Um, as, as someone who was at Occupy DNC for, um, six days, marching miles every day for, um, in over a hundred degree heat, um, screaming at the top of their lungs, hell no, uh, <laughs> hell no DNC, we won't vote for Hillary. Um, and I didn't, uh, <laughs> it was, you know, it was at that moment that it all came to a head. We all knew things were happening and, um, you know, we knew that, everything was all the cheating was going on and and you know all the all the the ugliness of the hillary supporters were doing um in our chats and everything like that and but being at the dnc it just kind of culminated everything and we all all forty thousand of us just kind of learned at that moment they could get away with anything and everything. Um, we learned that even though uh, Debbie Wasserman Schill and four other people were forced to step down, um, that there were still going to be no ramifications. Uh, Debbie Wasserman Schill actually got a job um, with Hillary less than two hours after she was forced to resign. Um, they admitted fuckery in a court of law. Nothing happened. Um, so all of this, not just what they did, but all of um, the actual cheating. And, um, you know, we saw in New York um, having to register to vote six months in advance. Um, and it's a closed primary. That's there for no other reason than to push independents and greens and what have you out of the way. That's the only reason that's there. And unfortunately, in New York, in October, and what happened was a lot of people didn't know about Bernie at that time. So we lost potential voters at that point as well. So unfortunately it you know then uh, independent voters there were millions who could not vote who wanted to vote for bernie when it came time to new york then you have over three million paper ballots in boxes in california then you have what happened in uh nevada um you know with not even being able to speak up you have a an actual Hillary delegate stand up and say, you know, I wanted Hillary to win. I'm not a huge fan of Bernie, but I'm going over to Bernie's side because the way you guys are behaving is disgusting. That's proved something. Um, so there's there's so much that went on, uh, but also, you know, the the thing that got so bad was people were discouraged. Um, they didn't want to, they, we were disenfranchised. They, you know, they, they made us feel and, and rightfully so that our vote didn't count. What the hell's the point of voting? They're going to take it anyway. What's the point of vote, voting when, um, they're telling us it doesn't count. Um, 
then there was the whole thing about being vote shamed. Um, we went from, <laughs> you know, our vote being so-called wasted to our votes, you know, deciding the entire election. Um, so that's kind of interesting the way that it means nothing and everything all at once. Um, but, you know, it, it's come to the point where we are in primary season and there are people who are so disheartened and they rightfully ask, what does it matter if I vote? What's the point? Is it even going to be counted? Um, what if the, the people we elect are, are still going to be, you know, uh, total Dems claiming to be progressives? Um, we see that happen a lot. I see that, um, you know, looking for candidates. Um, the, the platform isn't uh, always telling. I look back to their Facebook pages in July of 2016. I want to see who, you know, who they supported. I want to see what their comments were on November 8th. Um, I like to research these things. I don't want neolibs um, on my show. I take the word progressive very seriously. Um, so it's, you know, a lot of us in each state, I'm in Pennsylvania, but we all, you know, have these experiences where we think um, that somebody is worthy of our vote locally. Um, and then they they turn out to be just a total fraud. Um, so somebody asked me to speak about voting, and I think it's a really important topic because people are, you know, kind of wavering right now. Should I, shouldn't I? My suggestion is to at least register. Um, oh, okay, that's good, Lynn. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, May 4th is the deadline to register in Florida. Um, and you know, I digress a little, but thank you so fucking much, Tim Canova. Like, thank you. I love you so much um, for going independent. Like, I can't even tell you how giddy that made me. Um, Tim was actually the first guest I ever had on my show. Um, and for some reason, he still talks to me. <laughs> I didn't tell him it was uh, my first show until the next day. Um, but I was so happy when he went independent because, you know, suing the DNC um, because they admitted they illegally destroyed ballots um, while also running in the DNC is not only counterproductive, it's also um, it's it's your prey for them to do it again. Um, so, you know. Actually, Carrie, that's not actually that's not accurate. Uh, <laughs> he actually dissed Bernie twice, um, so that's why Tim actually worked for Bernie, um, and he dissed Bernie twice. But anyway, I digress. Um, so the him doing that, I think, it's going to be so much harder for DWS to actually. Um, control what's going on with Tim. Um, he's He's got a separate, um, you know, he's a separate entity now, lack of a better term. Um, so it's gonna be fascinating to see what happens. He is actually going to, uh, we can wait until November to see what happens now. Um, and I am so for Tim. If I don't want to get, um, super um, excited and, and everything because if, if it doesn't happen, it's gonna be a hard blow. Um, but when it comes down to it, um, you know, if, fingers crossed, if Tim won independent wise against the number one shill, corrupt piece of garbage, <laughs> If he won against that, that would change everything. Absolutely everything. Oh no, Ronnie, Tim's not MIA. My guest was not. Tim was on a while back. My guest tonight was MIA, not Tim. 
<laughs> Definitely not Tim. Uh, <laughs> he's amazing. Um, but yeah, I mean, think about what that would mean if Tim won as an independent at, against just basically Beelzebub herself. Um, that would be the biggest fuck you to the Democratic Party in existence. Um, so, you know, that's something to look forward to, hopefully. And we definitely, I will be doing phone backing and, and stuff like that, um, even from Pennsylvania. Um, a lot of us can do that, um, as well, Stephen Jaffe, um, who I've had on, who I adore. If he kicks ass against Pelosi, that will also change things. Um, he was completely, you know, I was floored a couple of weeks ago. He was endorsed by um, Susan Sarandon, which is freaking awesome because she's amazing. Um, so looking back to 2016, I think a lot of us can come to the conclusion that if we all had open primaries, we would 100% have President Sanders. I think that mostly everyone's in, in agreement. Um, with that being said, that's why we don't have them. Um, it's too easy for people to vote the way they want to. It's too easy for people of color to vote the, the way they want to. It's too easy for people to run as independents. Something I've learned doing this show is, you know, I've interviewed over 60 candidates from all across the country. Um, during that, I have learned so many different um, rules and stipulations uh, you know, where some states, if you want to run independent, you have to collect 5,000 signatures in like a week and a half of registered voters. That's not even feasible. They do it on purpose. And then some of these candidates are totally Dem exit. They, they don't even like the Dems. They don't want to be part of the Dems, but they have it set up so that they can't run any other way. So I think it's important for us to acknowledge that. I definitely learned, like, in the beginning, I was like, oh, they're running dumb. They're not progressive. Fuck that. But then I started learning, you know, the, the way that things are set up. And some of them honestly don't have a choice. It is literally don't run or run as a dem. It, that's, that's the only two options in many states, unfortunately. Um, and like I said, it's by design. Um, today it was in the news, and now I cannot remember the state. I want to say it's Arizona. I'm almost positive it's Arizona. Um, they found out that like over 120,000 um, uh, cards were not mailed out, cards to um, uh, pre register to vote ahead of time. They were not mailed out. And these are actually, um, you know, states who do check ID and things like that. Uh, so this is a big deal. And, you know, I, they didn't give what kind of, if, you know, what kind of party the people were in. But I, I'm going to say they were probably mostly independent. I just kind of have that feeling. Um, so then it also makes you think if if Shillery could not win doing every single thing in her power and she still lost and they have learned nothing, absolutely nothing. DNC doesn't give a fuck. They don't care. They they don't give a shit about us. They don't. They proved that. We told them Bernie or bus. They chose or bus. They've done absolutely nothing. Um, they they gave us Trump. They are they are either full of cognitive dissonance or in denial or they just they don't care. They would rather have Trump twenty twenty than run someone progressive. It's that simple. It's they knew there was a chance Trump was going to win if they propped up the Queen. And that's exactly what happened. 
And y'all know damn right well there is not one other person who could lose to Trump. That, like, every time Hillary supporters, you know, disrespect Trump, I'm like, well, your girl literally lost to him. What does that say about her? It's incredible. Um, so you have someone who literally has the media in their pocket, money in their pocket, voting machines in their pocket, and still can't win. That's someone that's literally like loathed by many. Um, and yet some of them are still just coming at us so ugly, but vagina. You know, it's it's always, but Trump, or but she's a woman. Give me something else. They can't. Well, she is experienced. Yeah, guess what? Trump is president. He has experience. What else you got? She has experience in putting our national security at risk, giving... Uh, selling Russia 20% of our uranium, um, stealing money from Haitians. She has experience, definitely. Um, they just choose to not acknowledge the experience um, that <laughs> is actually important. Um, so this is what's, what's also going to happen as far as, you know, being a woman. Um, we're going to see that. We're seeing it already. Kamala Harris is, she's a woman of color and she's a woman. They're already starting, already. She is trying so hard to take cues from Bernie and people are falling for it. Um, people who actually I thought were progressives, which is really depressing. Um, she said that she would not take corporate money anymore. But then I saw a clip of her a few days ago on Ellen where she actually stated, well, it depends. No, you either do or you don't. This is what they're going to try to pull. Cory Booker pulled the same damn shit. Now he's trying to be like Mr. Progressive. He had a lot of us duped in the beginning. He did. Like, I'm not going to lie. I fell for it. But the first thing that set me off was when Bernie came out with that um, legislation to lower um, the prescription drug prices, and he voted against it. Of course, it came out. He made, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars on Big Pharma. The Something that comes back to big money is literally every single thing we talk about comes back to big money. Are people going to vote for Medicare for all who vote, who have money uh, from big pharma and healthcare corporations? No. Are they going to vote for environmental causes when they are taking money from big oil and fracking? No. Are they going to um, help people of color get uh, decriminalize marijuana when they're, they have stock in private prisons. No. This is the number one thing that everything falls into. Yes, I'm, I'm in Pennsylvania, 100%, Jenna. Um, Bob Casey, I agree. Um, and you know what else, Jenna? I was thinking of this um, when I was talking about people who um, you think are, you know, who say they're progressive and, and things like that. And then you find out otherwise. Um, we have this guy here in Pennsylvania. His name is John Fetterman. Um, you guys may have heard of him. Um, he was like a, a huge, uh, you know, so-called Bernie supporter, which he totally wasn't. He was just using the movement. And I met him in real life and he was a total dick. Um, and yes, Fracker Man, he is a total, uh, you know, frack boy, uh, but he, Bob Casey endorsed him. And also, uh, Pap and Fuse, who is known as Pap and Puss here, endorsed him as well. Um, Pap and Fuse in, in Pennsylvania is actually known for gentrification of Harrisburg, which is the area I live in. Um, so these people endorsed Fetterman. So 
to me, that, that says a lot. Uh, you know, who endorses you is, is kind of a big deal. Oh, so you know, Jenna, you know, he's, yeah, he's, he's something else. The second I met him, I knew he wasn't for real. Um, and I, I was asked to be on a conference call with the Pennsylvania Art Revolution um, chapter to talk about um, endorsing certain candidates because of the work I do with candidates, like how I would choose, things like that. And he was brought up and pretty much unanimously, we were all like, um, no, <laughs> that is literally going to kill our revolution, like right there. Um, so, you know, I'm sure all you guys have people like that. Um, I'm kind of going off on a tangent. I apologize because all this was like so spur of the moment and I'm just reading, uh, the comments. Um, but you know, Yes, I saw that as well, Jenna. Um, there is a progressive woman named Summer Lee. She is a uh, an, an activist, um, and uh, you know he's also choosing her counter uh, to endorse as well. Um, says also, it's not just who endorses them, but also who they endorse. Um, it's it's definitely import important. Um, he also. Um, you know, as an activist it, who's who's been doing this for a couple of years, even before November 8th, 2016, um, I live outside of Harrisburg, so I organize a lot of stuff on the Harrisburg Capitol steps. Um, and, you know, it's it's it works well because I'm so close. So I would organize. Um, I've done three for health care, four for um, Dapple. Um, I did, I co-organized an immigrant solidarity march with almost a thousand people, um, Muslim solidarity, um, just Flint, uh, the list goes on, like just, just tons of events that I've, I've done. And he, I saw him, Fetterman, one time, and it was at the gun, um, the fight for our lives a couple of weeks ago. I wasn't, I didn't organize that. I was there live streaming for real progressives and he showed up. He spoke for literally about five minutes and he left in his sharp car immediately after. Like he doesn't care. He is not 99%. He stayed like, how passionate are you? If you come speak and leave, you have no interest in what these kids are saying, what these teachers are saying. You have no interest in talking to these people because we're not his district. He doesn't care. He doesn't want to represent Pennsylvania. All he cares about is his, you know, his little area who's actually going to vote for him. Um, so, like I said, I'm sure you guys all have people like that. And and it's definitely, you know, it's something I've learned to do to not just look at what they're doing now. I love, I spend easily over two hours in like looking into each guest before I have them on. Um, and I love looking back at old Facebook posts and stuff. You can totally learn so much that way. Um, I have considered guests and then said, hell no, within a nanosecond from seeing, you know, a post here and there. Um, so it's definitely interesting. If you're considering voting for someone, I would definitely kind of, um, and Google, I find a lot of cool shit through Google because I interview people from other states. So I don't get those local newspapers and stuff, but sometimes you'll have op-eds from local people on these um, candidates, and you can learn some good shit that way. Um, so these are things that um, I've learned. I am in no way, shape, a journalist, uh, which is funny when people call me that because I'm just a, a, a girl who works in healthcare who got lucky to do this. <laughs> Thank you, Real Progressives. Um, <laughs> so I like having people I like having candidates who are us. I like people with a story. I like people who um, 
grew up knowing what it was like living paycheck to paycheck. Um, people who work full time, people who have been activists, people who are known in their communities. Um, just, you know, just running for something isn't good enough. I also like to know with each person, would you still be running if Hillary were president? Because most of them say no. And that's a problem to me because the one good thing you can say about Trump is he inadvertently woke a hell of a lot of people up. So the fact that a lot of these candidates wouldn't run if she won, that's a problem because things were still such shit state that it is just business as usual and things need to change regardless of who's in there. But people wouldn't see it because all they see is, you know, this dynasty, you know, first woman president and she's, you know, she's married to an ex-president and, you know, it would have been all about that. The whole identity politics bullshit, nothing would have changed, nothing. Um, so we are forced as, as terrifying as Trump is and as hurtful as he is to, you know, so many people we love, it's, we can take from that, that people, people's mindsets are never going to be the same. Um, so we have that to, to move forward in these primaries. We have to really consider what do we want? We didn't do the whole, you know, vote blue matter, no matter who thing last time. We don't have to do it in the primaries either. If there's not someone you want running, I say just go write someone in. <laughs> I always write Bernie in. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Like, I wrote him in on uh, the general, and I just, like, in my um, area, sometimes people don't run for stuff in certain categories, which is another reason why you guys should think about running. Uh, because sometimes they honestly don't even have anyone running in a certain category. So it'll just be completely open. So I usually just write Bernie and them all. So he may be, you know, becoming like lunch lady or I have no idea. Um, but, oh, that's a good one, Jenna. Yeah, you can actually put in things you're passionate about, like put in Medicare for all or or something like that. Um, a lot of Harambees. I know people do that. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you know, I think it, I think it is important to vote, even if you don't vote for a specific person. Um, just because I don't know, I do get a sense of gratification out of it. Um, just because I am, I'm doing something that I personally feel like I should. Um, I don't knock people who don't, um, but I feel like if it's every, you know, two years or what have you, it's, it's not a big deal, um, to me to, um, to do that. I will say in Pennsylvania, we are definitely, uh, we have slim pickings here. Um, it's unfortunate. I do have two, uh, PA people who may be coming on next week, um, but they're not in my district. Um, but people often ask me to run, but I say fuck way too much and <laughs> it ain't gonna happen. Um, I just, no, no, ain't gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> um, but, you know, doing this show has, has changed me in so many ways. Um, it has, you know, I've met people like you guys from all across the country who I would never have met. And I love learning your stories. Um, it breaks my heart a lot of times to learn your stories because I see people, you know, I meet people who have had their votes stolen. I see the comments right now. Um, it's heartbreaking. When I was at Occupy DNC, I literally held this woman who was sobbing uncontrollably because she was a delegate and her vote was not counted. Like, to be a delegate, you have to, you know, really work your ass off to get to that point. It's a lot of work. And it's a lot of money to get to Philadelphia and all that. And she couldn't even vote. That is 
just so beyond disgusting. I, and yeah, you know, Ronnie, Ronnie Sue, you bring up a really good point because there's no way Jill got those numbers they're saying she got. I didn't vote for her personally, but there's, there's no way we, you know, we're online. We see these people who loved Jill. There's no way she got those few of votes. It's not possible. Um, there are so many people I've spoken with who know people in their area who voted for Jill in addition to them. And they're like, oh, one voted in this county. How? They're sitting with three right now. Um, you know, stuff like that happens all the time. And it's so ridiculous because, you know, if they do the math, she wasn't going to win that county anyway. But yes, you are you are exactly right, Carrie, because she would have gotten that 5%. And that scares the shit out of them. How great would that be if we had another so-called main party to choose from? That would be phenomenal. It really would. That would be amazing. I am very proudly Demexit. I am a very proud um, independent. Um, I did two uh, Dem Enter <laughs> Dem Exit shows uh, debates, um, which were fascinating, um, but um, also very contentious. Um, so there's a lot of passion on both sides. Um, I, I really, and this is probably very idealistic or utopian to feel this way, but I really hope um, that, you know, we can kind of all progressives and, and everything could populist um, DSA, uh, whoever can just kind of all get on the same page at some point um, so that we can elect someone good <laughs> because right now where we are, it used to be Democrats against Republicans. That's what it was. It was, you know, many of us grew up, Republicans are bad, Democrats are good. That's it. But now we're learning since 2016, there are Democrats against Democrats. There are progressives against Democrats. There are Democrats against burners. There are uh, Jills against burners. There are libertarians against, uh, you know, it's just, it's, we all hate each other, <laughs> like essentially. And, and it sucks. It really does suck. Um, but you see that contention, um, you know, in these groups and online and it, you know, I look back to the way things used to be, you know, I get these, um, these, uh, you know, on this day on my timeline and I watch these videos I made about like how my, um, my campaign office was like my second home. Um, and how I just loved being there with my second family so much. And, you know, I worked full time and went to school and worked a minimum of 15 hours a week at the campaign office, um, canvassing, phone banking, organizing marches, um, voter registrations, all those things. And I would do it again in a heartbeat. However, I, I am, I do have those trepidations because when, when we were cheated, the first thought was, I had was, oh my fucking God, we did all of that for absolutely nothing. Every door we knocked on, we had hope. We would speak to these people who would get so excited and say, wow, really? He stands for that? Or he's been doing this for this many decades and all this stuff. And we would get so excited, like, oh my God, we, we just we got another person to see like they should vote for Bernie. It was so exciting. And then we realized like all the work we put in, they never were going to let us win. They weren't. It didn't matter how hard we worked. Um, I'm thankful that the, you know, the campaign office I worked in, we had um, out of 14 um, sections of our um, of the way our county was um, 
out of our district, essentially. Um, we won nine of those. So we were pleased with that, but it definitely was heartbreaking when we were watching the results for Pennsylvania um, because we know we had spoken to so many people who were so excited about Bernie. Um, and the fact that we're supposed to believe that Philadelphia went to um, Hillary, I, uh, I, I find that really hard to believe because I've been to Philly many times for Bernie events and marches and such. And like Hillary could literally could not even fill a high school auditorium when we were at, um, you know, when, <laughs> thank you, Sarah. <laughs> That's very sweet. That's kind. Um, when we were at Occupy DNC, no lie, they were literally coming out and asking people, offering them $50 to come inside to fill seats because all of our delegates walked out. Literally, not kidding. They put an ad on Craigslist too. They were coming out. They, I thought about it because I, I was, I was like, you know, I'm a basement dweller, so I need money. But I was like, if I go in there, I could stir some shit up like nobody's business. But they said that to go in, I would have to take off my Bernie buttons. I would have to put on a Hillary shirt and I would have to hold a Hillary sign. And I was like, eh, I can't. I already want to take a shower just thinking about it. I can't. Um, but, you know, seeing that and just seeing, you know, I had you know, friends just, I was sitting around people who were bawling because Hillary people were pushing them and name calling them and ripping up their signs. It was so ugly. I couldn't believe it. Like you already stole the election. Why do you, what, why do you hate us? What the hell did we do? Yes, they, actually, you are absolutely correct, Joshua. They turned off the, the lights when People were chanting, no more war. Burners were chanting that. They literally turned out the lights because they knew that that was a slam against Hillary. They knew because they knew she's known as a warmonger. Then you have Hillary who has these people who, you know, who did, you know, not as many as Bernie, but who did actually, you know, go door to door and phone banking and things like that for Hillary. And she, when she lost on November 8th, they, she didn't even come out to thank them. That's how classless she is. They had, she had people in the audience who had flown in from all over the country who were sitting there and who were hysterical. And I felt bad for them because I knew what it was like to have to have that taken from me. But she couldn't even come out and thank them. It's, it's just incredible. She is such a cold person. Um, and she still has those, those people who just blindly follow her. And they're the ones who are you know, who are killing the Democratic Party. They are the ones who are making it not Democratic because if you don't talk, if you don't, I'm not even telling you to Dem exit. I did, but I respect everyone's choice. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't call the DNC on their shit, if you don't call them, send them letters, email them, do whatever, if you don't tell them straight up, you're fucking cheaters. You're pieces of shit. You're never going to get people's votes. You're never going to win if you keep this shit up. If you keep that shit to yourself, you are an enabler. You are completely allowing every single thing to happen. You have no right to complain when you lose in 2020, which is a very distinct possibility. Um, and this whole thing is just nothing but uh, a blame game. We have Trump because of this. We have Trump because of that. No, we actually have Trump because of Hillary and DWS. 
they're talking about these um this lawsuit it is the biggest joke in the world i have never seen an organization so fucking stupid than to literally sue another organization for doing the same thing that they did why are they trying to bring attention to what they did to us that is the i i don't even know what to say about that it's so fucking stupid it's like and then here's the thing that i always say to hillary supporters you know russia leak the email wikileaks blah 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 all that shit but what I say every single time is they didn't write the emails. Hillary and her team never once denied anything in those emails. Never once. And if five people from the DNC ended up being forced to resign because of those emails and they never said shit to the DNC, never sued them for, you know, losing their job unlawfully, um, never went to media and said, you know, they they were, you know, wrong to do it. And then you got Donna Brashill, who eventually admits she gave her the questions ahead of time. Also, you know, in WikiLeaks, um, you know, it, it's just absolutely incredible the, the way that these apologists think. Um, they think that just because of a certain they feel information was obtained a certain way that it should automatically be excluded but the fact of the matter is any freaking thing that comes out about trump i don't care if somebody digs through that dude's garbage they are gonna celebrate that shit like nobody's business they get so high off of that shit oh my god did you see what just came out about trump oh but wait I thought that was an invasion of privacy. I thought you didn't want people going through people's emails and texts and stuff like that. It's not right to do, remember? But actually, it's right to do unless it's your candidate. That's what we learned over and over. Um, there's a really good study that I read in The Nation where um, some former CIA and FBI agents um, actually investigate everything um, from the um, the WikiLeaks um, from where the information came from and everything and they have stated that they their only conclusions is that the information was leaked not hacked they put it on a thumb drive one person did that put it on a thumb drive, and that's how the information was obtained. It was found by someone internally. So the fact that WikiLeaks literally has uh, over 10 years of 100% impeccable uh, you know, reputation for never having to renege a story, um, things like that, nobody else can say that. Um, now, WikiLeaks is actually suing back the DNC, which is just so bananas. Um, but it's it's interesting, but it's just, it's so, I mean, this shit is so out of hand. It's so bananas. Like even everything we went through in 2016, this is, we knew it was gonna get crazy, but this shit is just, you cannot write this shit. So then, okay, so speaking of that, um, so here's an interesting thing, too. I don't know if you guys know this. When Donna Brashill did her book, she dedicated it to Seth Rich. I <laughs> almost punched a hole in my wall. <laughs> that was the most fucked up thing like i was so disgusted um i still don't know what's going on with that i don't think we'll ever know um but yeah i i digress um but yeah this this whole thing um i yeah exactly how 
Okay, so you get a botched robbery. Okay, but they still have his computer. They won't. Why the hell do they have his computer if it was a botched robbery? Yeah. <laughs> Joshua, I know, but you know what? She also said this. Oh my God. Donna is hilarious inadvertently. She's a fucking mess, but she's hilarious. Um, she got, she said, before I called Bernie, I lit some candles and I prayed and I read my Bible and I put on some music and I said, dear Lord, I'm about to do something that's going to be really hard. And I hope this man doesn't hurt because of what I'm about to help tell him. But I told him, I am sorry. I am sorry for what they did to you. It was the most, it was like, <gasps> I'm so amazing. I, she set that mood so perfectly. It was pretty much the fakest thing in the entire universe. Um, but yeah, I keep going off on a tangent because this was totally impromptu. Um, so in a way, I'm kind of glad that uh, my guest didn't show up because it was good to just kind of rant about some bullshit, um, which I feel like I don't get to do enough anymore. Um, but you guys are so rad. Like, I feel like every time I talk about stuff, even if it's so random, I have so just amazing people in the comments who just like crack me up and say awesome things. Um, so thank you guys so much. Um, you guys humble me and you keep me sane in this fucked up world. <laughs> um, so thank you guys so much. And um, I will be back on Friday night um, with a, a candidate at 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, his name is Dimitri, oh shit, Cherny or Cherny. Um, so he's pretty rad. He has a Bernie tattoo. He's running as a Republican um, to basically say, like, fuck you to the Dems. Um, and it's actually a really interesting um, idea because he's he's in South Carolina. So I think his his uh, strategic plan may actually work. Um, so that'll be good. That's Friday night. Oh, I love you too. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. You have a great night and I'll see you Friday.